be careful with that one. You don't want your objects to explode later on because they're full of resin, which will happen if you don't do it properly. Now we all love printing our miniatures for our tabletop gaming, but sometimes you want to print something a little bit bigger. And for that, you need to 3D hollow. So for that, I'm going to show you how to 3D hollow your prints, including how to make sure that they're supported properly and not making some of the mistakes I see a lot of people do. So with that, let's get going. So this is obviously 3D hollowed and it's rather strong, uh, strong enough to survive that when the minis didn't, I slammed that down pretty hard. And so on this one, let's talk about what I did to make sure that the models are structurally sound when they're 3D hollowed. That way, if you're doing something like this, that's not massively huge, sometimes we do bigger objects that are 3D hollowed. This thing is completely 3D hollowed uh, down from the, the arms, the head, you know, the back piece. Um, the base, it's obviously would be really expensive to print this if it wasn't hollowed. And so on this one, of course, we want to make sure that when we hollow our prints, not only are they structurally stable on the shelf for a long period of time, but that in some cases, like the dragon here, that you can actually play with them and not worry about them breaking down. This thing has been sitting on the shelf for two and a half years now, I believe, and it is completely stable and solid. Uh, I was tempted to use this one to slam it down, but uh, it's one of my early prints and if it did break I'd be too sad. First, let's talk about what not to do when it comes to resin 3D printing and hollowing out your objects. For this, I'm going to use this X-Men Wolverine in LA figures. But actually, first first, there's one other thing I need to tell you so that some of the terminology I'm going to use in this video makes sense. And for that, first we're going to go over to prepare. And under hollowing, we're going to see that there's a thing here called hollowing 3D. Now, I want you to keep that in mind while I show you something else. So real quick, let's hide Mr. Wolverine. Let's keep everything but, let's say, his chest. So let's come over here and let's turn on uh, this here Ninja Turtle torso, which is massive. Talk about 3D hollowing, uh, wanting to 3D hollow something. Uh, this Ninja Turtle is huge. This Ninja Turtle is by ZEZ Studios, also found on the Lechi Library. Now, there's a difference here. If I click on the torso under prepare, you'll see the exterior button right here is actually visible. So now that I only have the Ninja Turtle on the scene, you'll notice that the exterior view is completely grayed out. I can't click on it. But if I were to, let's say, pull down the layer slicer preview over here, you'll see that this object is hollowed. There's an interior to it with support structure and hollowing holes and everything. But this button right here cannot be pressed. Now, if I come back over and I turn back on the Wolverine uh, torso right here, and now the exterior enter button is visible. I can press it now. So if I click on it, what we're going to see is we can now see the inside of the Wolverine model and the um, Ninja Turtle looks really, really weird. And, you know, if I cover that up completely, it's there's no transparency at all to the uh, Ninja Turtle. We can't see inside of it, but we can't see the Wolverine. So what's going on here? Well, this is the difference between a baked in hollow, which would be the Ninja Turtle here, or hollowing 3D, a light slicer code where here in the Ninja Turtle, this is real uh, ge geometry. If I exported this as an STL, um, there's going to be hollowing here. In fact, if this is hollowed thick enough, we can see here, I, I could probably even hollow this again, which is going to be really, really weird. So if I go over to hollow, we have to make the wall thickness really, really thin. And let's do it again. Let's see. I might actually be able to hollow the hollow. And what it's going to do, it's just going to hollow out in between the interior and the exterior shell. A terrible idea. Never, never do this in real life. Oh yeah, there you go. So you can see here, I've got this uh, shell in the inside that's now hollowed. I've applied a 3D hollow to a geometric geometry hollowed um, item, whatever. English is still my first language, but it's hard. So now if I click on the interior exterior button, you can see we can actually see a new interior. Now it's really weird because this interior is like, it's, it's getting really weird here. But anyway, I think we spent enough time on the difference between hollowing 3D and geometry hollowing. But real quick, I just want to talk about the third one, which is hollowing 2D. Still light slicer code, but very different than hollowing 3D. So for this one, I'm going to show this little mushroom house over here. And I'm just going to apply hollowing 2D to it real quick. I'm just going to click on right here with this object selected. And now if I scroll this up and down, you'll see it's got this weird pattern to it. Now hollowing 2D, the interior exterior button doesn't work. That's because there really is no interior exterior. All there is is like this black, you call it a mask that's overlaid on all the layers that creates a 2D hollowing effect when it's 3D printed. But in reality, there's nothing that's actually changing on the mesh. An example of what this might look like is these right here. This one, you can kind of see the mesh inside of it. This one has been 2D hollowed. 
Uh, and this is what the mesh looks like uh, once it's finally printed inside. Now the golden over here on this side, this one's been 3D hollowed. So you can see there's holes on the top and holes on the bottom. And the interior of this is completely hollow while the interior of this one is full of mesh. There is a weight difference between these two, but there's also a structural difference. And just to give a quick idea, the one that's been 2D hollowed with the interior kind of meshing supports weighs 50 grams, 50.1. And the one that's 3D hollowed with, uh, I don't think, I think there's only a few supports inside, not really many at all, it's mostly completely empty, is 41 grams. Not a huge difference, but uh, where you're gonna use this type of hollowing versus this one, this one's gonna be more for like, the 2D is gonna be more for like bases where you need some extra structure, some extra strength, or molding. If you're gonna use uh, resin 3D prints for doing molding, there are resins that can handle that one. You're definitely going to want to use 2D hollowing instead of 3D. Uh, and you may wonder why you even hollow it at all for some molds. Well, sometimes when you hollow in objects, it's easier to print, it's cheaper for the mold material, and it can actually be overall stronger and less warping, so the mold can actually hold its shape a little bit better. One more thing that's important to note about 2D hollowing, if you turn 2D hollowing on, it's on for every object on that build plate. If you want to turn it off, that's where you're going to come over here to the object library, and you can click this little button right here, and that will turn it on or turn it off. Everything that's 3D hollowed, that will it will over, 3D hollowing overrides 2D hollowing, but if you've applied um, no hollowing at all to an object, make sure to go in there and turn that off. Otherwise you might have something like a hand or something small that you didn't intend, or even like a mini, you didn't intend to have hollowed, but now there's like a, a hollowing inside of it and now your object has liquid resin inside. So be, be careful with that one. You don't want your objects to explode later on because they're full of resin, which will happen if you don't do it properly. And now back to your regular program, how to properly support an object that's been 3D hollowed. So again, let's just give an example of what not to do. So I'm gonna hit interior right here. And this is why this is an example of what not to do. What we have here is a tremendous amount of structure inside of a 3D hollowed object to the point where I'm not even sure if it was worth hollowing this. There's gonna be a lot of um, resin gaps. We can see here that there's resin, uh, there's supports going through some of the uh, the hollowing holes, so these aren't gonna print properly. It's not gonna cause any major issues. Like I said, this will still print just fine. You're just not gonna get all the advantages of it. So from here, I'm gonna delete the interior supports of all the models so that I can redo them. That's pretty easy. All I have to do is click on exterior, and from here, I can only see the supports on the inside. Uh, from this point, I can just select the model, drag and grab all the supports, and hit delete. And I can just do this for all of them and just delete all the supports. Now you can see here, all the interior supports are gone. And if I click on this button again, all the exterior supports are still untouched. So that's one quick way just to delete them all real fast. There's a couple other ways, but this way is my favorite, so I'm just gonna stick with it. So now that I've deleted all the interior supports, I'm just gonna run an island search. Um, for this one, since it's, I'm only caring about the interior, I'm just gonna put it the accuracy on normal and then just hit go from there. So now from here, I'm gonna click back onto my exterior view. And now I can see if there's any islands on the interior of the models. I can see a couple right here. Now, when it comes to supporting the interior, this is really all I care about. The interior of the keys, because if I didn't support these right here, these keys would flatten out. And I believe this is the chest. Yeah. And the arms wouldn't go inside the sockets because the sockets would have collapsed a little bit uh, or collapsed entirely if it happens to be like on the neck socket that's an interior, like or like on these shoes right here. Let's see what that looks like. So on the shoe right here, nah, this one might print because it's bigger, but on some times there's like a neck socket that's really big and it's just, uh, it would completely fail. So what I do here now is I'm gonna go over to the interior pillar. Now my interior pillar is something that I created and you can create one yourself. All it is is where I've made the top diameter and the base diameter the exact same, 1.5. Um, there's nothing different about it. It's just, there's no break off point because I don't want it to break off. It's inside the model. I want it to be there forever. It's gonna add some structural integrity and it's so thick and it's so strong. I don't need that. I really don't need that many. To be honest, that's probably all I need in this entire thing. I mean, there's a little island up here, but really the island doesn't matter. It's too small. I'll put one there anyway. But this is pretty much all you would really need for the interior of this. If you're a little bit worried about these keys not, not printing, you can go ahead and add an extra one. But that's pretty much it. That's it's all this needs. And if I go around and look at the other ones, we can see if there's any other keys. I got two keys right here, uh, one and one. And again, if I want, I'm a little bit worried about those keys not working, I can just add a couple extra. And these supports are so thick and they're so strong, there's gonna be no issue at all. On the other ones, I'm not seeing any keys that need supporting. Um, I'm not seeing anything that needs supporting. Now, if you've got a really, really big overhang, let's say we're talking about a base. So let's hide these all right here. And let's bring out the base. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna look at the interior view. Now there's a lot more going on inside this one. 
And we're just going to grab all these and we're going to delete. All right. Now, if I look at this one from underneath, you can see there's a lot of overhangs. And so you might get worried about, well, do I need to support all these overhangs? Again, we're just going to go and do a normal island search. This one we might even do like fast, um, honestly, because we don't, we're not trying to preserve details of the inside of the model. We're just looking for the overhangs. And on this one, we don't have very many. We've got 15. And same thing, we're just going to go over to interior pillar and we're just going to grab a couple. Now, because these are bigger, I am going to do a couple of supports on some of these larger ones. Just because I want, I do want to make sure that everything prints just fine, especially this big one right here. We'll do two there. One there, a couple on this guy because it's really big and that's an important key. We definitely want it to print. Now over here on this key, we've got something interesting. And I'm going to show you another way to do this. So I'm going to turn off the exterior view. And now I'm going to take my support slider and I'm going to change it from bottom to top. And now I'm just going to kind of move this up until I can get an idea of the bottom of that key. Now, I, I like this view for this kind of thing because uh, it can just give it from a different perspective. And from this perspective, I can see uh, how many layers or how big is that key and does it need a few extra supports? And on this one, it's not very big. There's a, there's a bit of an overhang here that's kind of long, so I may just put like one more. If this was a really flat base with a really, really big uh, roof, I may add a few more and treat it more like the bottom of a base, even though it's the inside versus the outside. I may do something like that. And again, this view right here I'm using is just a, a good way to do that. Of course, I can always just go back, click on the exterior view, and continue going. And this is kind of what I was talking about right here. We, we have this big surface area right here. And you might be worried that this won't print properly because it's just a lot of unsupported resin. And you know what, I might actually agree. So on this one, this is a good example of where you might come in and just build yourself like a little bit of a ladder system that just works its way up. Now you could automatically do this, uh, but I find that the auto interior support sometimes just puts too many, way more than is needed. And so I'll generally I'll just go through and just look for any part that's a big overhang that's not an island and just go through and add a quick support to it. Again, we don't need that many. Um, this thing is going to mostly print itself. That's that's plenty, honestly, uh, just right there. And pretty much at this point, if I want to, I can come over here and I can brace these up. But really, these don't need bracing. Um, they're pretty, they're, yeah, you can see not much bracings were done. They're pretty thick. They don't really need bracing uh, to begin with, but if you're worried, you can. But the other option on something like this, like a big base, and like I said, since the base is going to have pressure on top of it, we don't want that roof collapsing as it's just sitting here. We might, on something like this one, do a 2D hollow. That would add the lattice structure inside. We don't have to worry about any of this one. You are going to have to make sure you clean it a little bit better, like dunking it in and out of uh, your cleaning solution, whether that be, you know, IPA or water, whatever you're using a few times, just to make sure that the cleaning solution has can really get into that lattice structure and flush it out properly. If you don't flush out, flush out your the interior of your 3D prints, they can swell and crack later on. That's actually why you see, if you see anything that's cracked on the internet, it's either because they didn't um, add holes to the object so that the, the cleaning solution could get in and clean out all the resin. Of course, all the resin could get out, and that's why they crack. Now, there's one more thing I want to show you, but it's important to notate that this next trip Trip tip, this next tip only works if the object has been hollowed using Lychee 3D hollowing. And for that one, it's using automatic supports on the inside of a model. And you'll know whether or not that is if you can click the interior exterior button. Next thing, you wanna make sure that you have all of your hollowing holes where you want them. Now from here, we're gonna to go to support under prepare, and we're gonna go over to auto. We're gonna make sure we select the type of support we want to use. This one, I'm gonna use the interior pillar. I'm gonna make sure that I put my support density at the lowest. I want auto bracing off and auto parent off. Auto lift, it doesn't matter. Uh, now I'm gonna click on the drop down here. I'm gonna choose generate automatic supports on only the interior supports. So I'm gonna click on this one right here. And this is only gonna generate on the inside. And it's also gonna avoid the hauling holes that I placed. Now this is a way to quickly add in supports on the inside. It's not gonna do as well as manually, uh, maybe a little bit overdo it uh, to err on the side of safety versus not. But you can see here what it did. And at this point, you could you could pretty much be done with the interior of the object without having to redo everything. And those with the magic eye might have seen this other option, supports to ground only. This is a way to generate supports that only go from the model all the way to the ground. It won't create any mini supports on the object. Something I get asked on the Discord server quite a bit, so I thought I'd throw that in there for you. Now, in all of my videos, I like to do a little pro tip. Here's the one for this one. If you do hollow your prints, make sure you clean them out properly or they probably will explode or crack later on. To do that, make sure you have a hole closest to the bottom, that's to prevent suction cups, and one as close as you can to the top. That's so that the resin can drain out while it's printing and so that the cleaning solution can go all the way through it. For this particular one where it's nice and clean at the top, I actually took advantage of where these little spikes were and I made these little plugs. So that way when this thing's hanging upside down, 
there's some holes where each of the plugs go. And then just using a little bit of wax, uh, I can just plug it right up when it's all done and you can never tell. The way I made these plugs is like this. An important step is that the object must be 3D hollowed for this to work. It won't work if 3D hollowing is not applied. Now from here, I just have these two uh, hollowing holes that I placed and I come over here and I click on cap only. If I select them both, I can click on cap only. It'll go through and it'll create both of these caps for me. And if I can look down over here, we can move them. You'll see these are the caps. Now these caps, all they are is they're just a cross section between where the hollowing hole made uh, intersected with the object. If we look over here, there's a couple things that I did to make this easier. One, I made sure that the hollowing holes don't go all the way through. So there'll be a little bit of a shelf because wherever this hollowing hole is when I print it, will not print. So it's gonna leave an exact open uh, spot between where that cap is that I made and the hole that's made by the hollowing hole allowing for a little plug. And the little shelves that I left over mean that the plug won't go all the way through in the model. It just makes it easier. Now there's one mistake that I see people make all the time when it comes to 3D hollowing, whatever. Instead of clicking cap only, they hit hole only or cap plus hole. Um, and they hole only and cap plus hole goes the same thing and the same thing we don't want to do, which is baking in the 3D hollowing or the hollowing 3D, which is the light you slice your code into baking it in so it's actually part of the 3D model. Let's see what that looks like. So I'm gonna hit hole only since I already have the caps. What this is gonna do is it's now gonna punch where that used to be all the way through the model. Now, you can also see the interior exterior button's gone. I can't click it anymore. The only way to look inside this model is to use the layer, the layer preview here. It's like the Ninja Turtle. This thing has now been hollowed using geometry instead of the legend code. That's gonna lock me out from a lot of features. So unless you have a really, really good reason to bake in that hollowing, I don't recommend doing it. It doesn't help you in 3D printing. In fact, I actually think it prints better if it's using the Lightsy Slicer code versus all the geometry. The good news is if you accidentally do that, you can just hit Control Z or undo. And now that will bring back the model to the way it was before I hit the wrong button and accidentally baked in my 3D hole link. And I think that about covers it. So when it comes to printing either your miniatures or the big demons they gotta fight or a big statue that's just gonna sit on your shelf and look beautiful. I hope that you're more equipped on how to properly use the tools in Lightsy Slicer to 3D hollow or 2D hollow or whatever hollow your prints so that they save you on resin, last longer, and don't explode on the shelf. And as always, please comment down below if you have any questions, even if it's just an insult at me. Like the video, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, or you can reach out to me on the Lychee Slicer Discord, or YouTube, or Facebook, or whatever. And as always, thank you for watching, and have a good day.